there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com, used to be LargeFamilyMothering.com, and um, I wrote a lot on my former blog that was hacked, unfortunately, about the McGuffey's Readers and using McGuffey's Readers for homeschooling. And I was thinking that it might be fun, it might be more helpful if I actually did some video and showed people, like, you know, the general layout of the books, um, the different versions, and how that I use them. So, that's what I'm doing here today. So first of all, I want to talk about the two versions. This one is the original McGuffey's versions that were written by James, um, I'm sorry, William Holmes McGuffey in the 1830s. William Holmes, William Holmes McGuffey <laughs> was, um, his parents were living on the Ohio frontier when he was a young boy. And his mother was concerned about getting her boys educated. So she was praying in the, in the backyard while she was putting up the laundry. And a man who ran a boys, uh, ran a school for kids, for Frontiers kids to be educated, he was riding through on his horse, and he heard her praying out loud. And he stopped and he said, Ma'am, you know, I heard you praying, asking God to um, help educate your boys. He said, I run a school. I must be the answer to your prayer. So uh, William Holmes McGuffey then, Professor McGuffey, then went to the school and he uh, learned how to read and write and cipher. And he went on to be a frontier uh, school teacher himself. And eventually he became the um, the president of the, of the Miami University there in Ohio. Um, he loved kids. He loved teaching kids. He loved teaching them reading and he had a lot of experience. Uh, he was also a Presbyterian minister, loved the Lord, very evangelical. Uh, his stories, the stories that he's included in these readers, are moral. Oftentimes they talk about basic tenets of the faith, such as, um, you know, um, um, basic sin and repentance and forgiveness. And they talk about God as creator. Um, some of them, the, like in the higher readers, they actually have apologetics included about why the Bible is true. Stuff like that. Very, very, I mean, these books are really solid solid books. But besides that, these books are also easy to use. Now, so the, these are the original version. And um, these are put out by Mott Media. They're the brown, they're the brown ones. Okay. And they have, they actually have gold. They say they have real gold ones, right? But anyway, they're, they're really good. They're, um, they've been re, um, redone by Mott Media uh, so they're kind of rough. They, they're, like, they're really old, you know. Took an old rough copy and they reprinted them in a very nice way. This is the uh, first book, the primer that they put out. Okay, so that's the original. A lot of people, what you think of when you think of the McGuffey, you think of the uh, these ones. These are the ones we associate. These are the ones that you see, like if you do a search on the internet you probably see a lot of pictures of these these are actually they're the revised version there are actually two versions that you can buy physically there might be a few more but these are the prominent ones um these were done in the late 1880s early 1890s uh william mcguffey was dead by then okay so he really didn't have anything to do with these these are a lot of people say that these are totally secularized they're not they have a lot of scripture they have a lot of reference to God as creator. They are very moral. They teach against lying, uh, stealing, cheating, being kind to others, kind that are less fortunate than you, are very important things, meditating on the Bible. Whole passages of scripture actually are included in lessons. Um, so that's, that's the revised versions, but they aren't like um, as overtly evangelical as were the originals. Also, the uh, originals have like I think you saw when I pulled out the, the primer, they're woodcuts. The the images, the pictures aren't quite as refined. They're kind of rough. These are woodcut images, and they're not as appealing, I guess. They're, but they're very simple and very straightforward. Um, these, however, that are included in the revised versions, especially I have I have some originals that were done in the 1920s. Not, no, this isn't. These are the ones I let my kids use. These are facsimiles. But I have some originals, and the, um, this is just, this is kind of a muddied illustration. When they, when they did the facsimile copies, you see, they're not as, not as, as, uh, refined. 
but these are still really they're they're actually engravings if you can see I have uh, from the 1920s in and the, the engrave the um, engraving on the uh, spine is really deep and when you touch the page you can feel the ink you know it's raised so they're really nice but kids like these a lot there's so much in each picture I mean I, I just like to sit and look at the pictures they're just amazing but anyway revised okay um, for me I like to take and I like to use the, the original McGuffey's until about going through the second reader in these and then I like to switch to the revised now how these go are it's basically this the McGuffey readers even though you will have a first second you know primers primers are when you're first learning to read basically that's what a primer means um, and then you have first second third fourth reader of you know, it only goes to the fourth of these okay that does not mean grades in other words uh, the primer it can be used in preschool it doesn't have to it can be used for older kids and then the first reader just means you're on the first reader level, not first grade. You can be first, second, third grade in the first reader, depending on where your reading level is. Um, so it's a totally different concept to our modern minds. They're revised the same way. There's like a couple years in each book, right? So if you were going to start with, well, for me, I'll show you uh, what I kind of do. I don't know if I want to take too much time here. Yeah, because I don't want to go over 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so basically what it is, is that, um, so when you're planning on how you would use these, you don't want to think, well, preschool, I'm going to use this one, uh, kindergarten, this one, first grade, this one. You're going to have to like, which is really cool. What, this is what I love about McGuffey's, is that you're not going to make a child feel as though if they're struggling with reading, even though they're six or seven years old, that you know, well, you're supposed to be, you know, first grade now, so why aren't you reading? They're going to be in a level of the McGuffey's. Totally. So it's going to correspond in a different way. They're not going to have the same problem as feeling as a behind or anything. See, that's really cool. See? Um, here's another thing. I love the McGuffey readers, especially the originals, because if you have a struggling reader, it's they take a lot of time and reinforce and re reintroduce and reinforce over and over again all these different concepts. Uh oh, someone just snuck past. <laughs> okay, so they're they're gonna reinforce these concepts over and over again. All right, so that's gonna be really cool. That's why I love them. I have a lot of struggling readers. Okay, I have a lot of creative kids. I've had kids that taught themselves. You now I have 15 children. I don't know if you know that. I've had children that taught themselves to read by the age of seven or eight. Um, and it was like a shock to me. <laughs> I said, how do you know how to read? Well, we just took a library book and read it over and over to each other. Like, I have two that did that for each other. And I was just like shocked. Most of the rest, however, really tend to struggle sometimes with audio and visual memory. Now, they're like artists, you know. I mean, they're very creative, artistic types and uh, very full of energy. You know, they would probably have all kinds of other labels <laughs> if I put them in school. But anyway, but I just thought that they're just unique people, so I didn't want to do that to them. But anyway, so sometimes they struggle a little bit with auditory memory. That's what, how you hear. And visual memory, that's what they see. Sometimes they couldn't remember patterns very well. I have one little girl, and she follows the pattern of all her creative brothers and sisters. And when she learned to read... She liked to guess at the words from the context. She loved language, and she could she listened very intently. She's a very good listener. She loves to listen to conversation. So, uh oh, I'm coming up to my time here. But I see I can't wear my glasses, so <laughs> too much clear. So I'm kind of blind. But anyway, um, anyway, so it really helped her that these reinforced. But I'm gonna go into more of that, and I think the next time I'll tell you some more about that. I'm gonna let you go. Bye bye.